So my name is Will Smith, but it seems like you guys know that. Um, so I'm here to talk about the University of Chicago. So, okay, I don't really understand this. How many of you guys are Bulgarian citizens? Okay, how many of you are UK citizens? No, okay, where are the rest of you guys from? Are America. America? Chicago. Nice. Poland. Poland. Oh, okay. okay. We have yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. More. Okay. You guys can take one of these and pass them around. For you guys. And so you guys are grade nine and grade eleven. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys have an idea of, of where you want to go to university? No. No. no? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, so. Where's mine? I think if there's not enough, I have more. Um, so how how familiar? Are you guys with like American universities and how the application process works? Because I think it can be very different. Okay. So I think one of the like unique things about universities in America and the University of Chicago is that you don't need to know what you want to study when you show up, right? So for a lot of universities here and across the world, you have to figure out that I want to do engineering, and you stay on that, right? The nice thing about the University of Chicago is that we are what's called a liberal arts school. So we do things like math, economics, physics, chemistry, biology, all these different subjects, right? So if you have a few different things that you want to study, maybe you want to be a doctor, maybe you want to be a lawyer, engineer, whatever, or you don't know, you can come to U Chicago and figure it out, right, and study all those different things. So I can talk about UChicago for a long time, but do you guys have any questions about the University of Chicago or American universities, kind of that process in general that you want me to answer? How do we apply about? or? Wait, uh, you first, yeah. I say that how do we apply or what is the specific platform for it? Yeah, so you guys will apply during the beginning of your senior year, usually in that fall. Okay. So the application process has kind of two timelines for the University of Chicago. So there's one application deadline in early November, and then one in early January. So for each of these, you have two choices. You can apply in a binding round, which means that you kind of lock in on this university. So it says, I want to come to you, Chicago. I know it's the place for me. So you, your parent, and your counselor signed this document that says, if I get into this university, I'll come, right? So you're kind of committed. But in each round, you can also apply non-binding, which means you apply to a bunch of different schools, you see where you get in, and then you decide, right? So the binding thing can be kind of scary, right? You like commit to a university, but if you have a university that's like your number one school, like you know you want to go to U Chicago or like Yale or something like that, you do a binding round there, right? Because it shows that university that you're committed to them, that you want to come, right? So that's kind of the timeline. And then for the application materials, so it'll be your transcript, which is like the classes, the courses that you've taken, and your grades. So do you guys have, did you do A levels? No, IB. IB? Oh, okay, perfect, okay. So, IB, so we want to see that you're taking kind of challenging courses, right? But you don't have to take every single class that is like the most difficult in your school, right? We want you to kind of have a life outside of school. So take the classes that interest you that are challenging. And then the next thing that we look at will be testing. So have any of you taken the SAT or the ACT? No? Some of you? Okay. So in U Chicago is kind of unique in that it is not required for our school. So you can submit ACT, SAT, um, AP, IB scores if you want but you don't have to. Um, we understand that these tests are like, they're a couple of hours of one day, right? Um, it's not kind of like indicative of your whole academic performance, right? So you can submit them if you want to, you don't have to. Um, for U Chicago, our testing ranges are pretty high. So like half the class has like a 34 to a 35 on the ACT, or it's like above a 1510 on the SAT. So they're really high. But if you don't have a score that's that high, don't submit it, right? It's not going to penalize you in our eyes. Um, so that's testing. The next thing we look at will be teacher recommendations. So you guys have pretty small classes, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is helpful. Um, because at UChicago, we also have really small classes. So one kind of grade level um, is like 1,800 people. Uh, but most of the classes, I think 85% of them, will have 25 or fewer students. So it'll be like this size or smaller. So you really get to know your professors and 
the way the classes work is that they're they're typically discussion based. So it's not like this where I'm standing up talking at you for like an hour. It'll be much more kind of collaborative where you guys get to talk with your professor, with the other students in the class, and that's kind of how it works. So for the teacher recs, what we're looking for is that you're that kind of student, right? That you want to talk in class, that you're not sleeping in class, that you kind of like to be there. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. So pick a teacher that knows you, right? That you've talked to before, that you have a relationship with. Um, that's teacher rec. And then for extracurriculars, we want to see that you're doing stuff outside of the classroom, right? Whether you play sports, you have a part-time job, you work, you know, for the school newspaper, whatever, stuff like that. So there's not like requirements, but we just want to know. Um, and then finally, U Chicago has essays. So I think this is typical for most American universities. You have to write like one short essay about yourself, which is called the personal statement. So that's basically about what's unique about you, right? So I wrote, I read an essay a few weeks ago from this girl and she was writing all about her piano teacher, right? And how wonderful her piano teacher was. And it was very cute, but it didn't tell me anything about that student, right? So when I read it, I should know more about you, what you're interested in, what you want to do, that kind of stuff. And then UChicago has two weird essays. Well, not two, but one weird essay, which is called the Uncommon Essay. So this is more of like a creative essay. So some of the past questions have been, where is Waldo, really? Do you guys know who Waldo is? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's make sure. Um, other ones have been like, find X, um, what can be divided by zero, um, what's so easy about pi, um, the one from last year, and this one also might not really work, but it's, with a finite amount of material in the universe, how do places like Olive Garden offer unlimited breadsticks? <laughs> Do you guys know what Olive Garden is? All right, I don't know if it's, yeah, okay. But so these questions are kind of, they're supposed to be fun, right? They're not supposed to be, like, have a right or wrong answer. It should be just kind of a way for you to write a fun essay, um, and that's what we're looking for. And then the other essay is a Why You Chicago essay, and you'll see this at every other American university, too. We want to hear about why you want to come to our university, right? So. I think the way I think about this is every student, you guys all have unique interests, right? One of you, some of you might want to be engineers or you want to do like computer science, and every university has unique things that they offer, right? So try to mash those up. So think about what this university offers that would uniquely suit me. Like, if you have those U Chicago sheets, you can see like one of the things that U Chicago is famous for is one dollar milkshakes, which happen every Wednesday. It's a big thing. So. Every Wednesday in the middle of the university, there'll be a big stand that will sell milkshakes for a dollar. Um, and even in like Chicago winters, which get really, really cold, you'll see a bunch of college kids lined up outside to get these milkshakes at like the middle of the afternoon. So I think every university has little kind of quirky things like this, and they want to hear that you know about it and that it's kind of exciting for you that you want to do it, right? Okay. Any questions about that? Yeah. These essays you're talking about are applied, like written and applied while we're applying to the university, yeah. correct? So, so you submit all of this stuff together. So, we so three essays. Three essays. So the, it's nice because it's all on one thing. So we have two like applications that you can use: the common application and the coalition application. And so it'll like have everything together for every university. Yeah, that's a good question. Any, anybody else about the application process? It can seem like it can seem like a lot, but I think what you'll find is that if you apply to more than one American university, it'll be a lot of the same stuff for most of them. So you might have to write a different like why this school essay, but the rest of it will be kind of the same. Yeah. Any other questions about the application process, kind of? Okay. Okay. Any other questions about U Chicago or, or American universities in general that I can answer? Hit me, yeah. No, okay. So, some other kind of specific things to U Chicago that I think are interesting. Um, one, we have over 94, we have 94 people um, affiliated with the university who have won Nobel Prizes. So, I think we have a lot of people who have done really well in the hard sciences, economics, and the medical sciences, things like that. So, I think. The nice thing about going to UChicago is you'll have really small class sizes and you'll get to really know your professors really well, um, which I think can be nice because at other American universities, 
like, so my brother, he went to the University of Southern California and Los Angeles, right? How many people were there? It's like 50,000 people? A little bit less, like 35,000. So it's a really, really big school, right? It's almost like a small town or a village, like, just for this university. And I think at U Chicago it's a bit smaller, so I think you get to know the people a little bit better, which could be nice. Um, the other thing, have any of you been to, how many of you been to the, the U.S. before? Okay, where'd you guys go? Florida, New York. Florida, New York. Chicago. Chicago. Texas. Texas. Oh, cool. New York. Okay, so let's see if I have this. One of the cool things about U Chicago is that it is in the city of Chicago, right? So Chicago is the third biggest city in the U.S. So you see, let's see. So this is, you want to do my knife? Okay, so this is the city of Chicago, right? It's downtown. And then we have the big lake in Michigan here, which is one of the big features of Chicago. And then down here is the University of Chicago. So it's like 15, 20 minutes from the city of Chicago. But I think the nice thing is that you get kind of the best of both worlds. If you want to go downtown to Chicago to eat, um, to go out, to go to like a uh, Bulls game, which is like the basketball team, it's really easy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, so public transport is actually pretty good. I think, I think in general, the U.S., the public transit is not great, but in Chicago, it's good. So I would say Chicago is probably like the second or third best public transportation in the United in the US. States. So we have, there's trains, there's buses, um, there's no trams. But one of the nice things about the university is that it will pay for every student to have like a public transit pass. So if you want to take the bus or the L train, which is what we call it, you don't have to pay, right? The university will pay for it. Um, and it's really easy to take buses and trains up to Chicago. It takes like 15 minutes, maybe. So you're right kind of downtown. And so uh, for dorms, that's a good question. So the interesting thing about, yeah, you can find that, yeah. So U Chicago is that every student is required to live in the university dorms their first two years. I think this is also pretty common for most American universities. At least for one year, you have to live on the campus. So the dorms are interesting. I think some of them are really, really new and are like glass high rises. Some are really old, like brick and stone traditional dorms. So you get to choose. Um, and typically, your first year, you'll have one like roommate, flatmate that you stay with. Um, and then your second or third year, you'll have your own room. Um, but I think that's kind of typical for American universities. Yeah. Have you guys watched? You guys have probably seen like American movies in the universities in the dorms. I think it's, they're pretty fun, right? So you're living with a bunch of other people that are your age. Um, the nice thing about U Chicago is that most universities are really, really big. So when you go, you might not know anyone, right? There's thousands of other people there. But at U Chicago, you're placed into like a college house. So. Most people think of this like the Harry Potter houses, right? There's a bunch of different houses, and there's between 50 and 100 people in each house. And at the dining halls, every house will have its own big, like, long table where you can sit and eat at. There'll be a big, like, banner above it with the house name. So it's nice because on day one, you don't know anybody, but you go to the dining hall, you know that you can go to your house table, sit there and eat with people in your house that you kind of know. Um, so I think it makes it really easy to acclimate to the university to kind of get, you know, adjusted to what's going on there. Um, the next thing is, while you're at university, there's a bunch of different extracurriculars that you can do, right? So you can write for, like, a newspaper, you can get a part-time job, whatever. Um, yeah, go ahead before, yeah. Sport facilities? Yeah, okay, perfect. That's what I was going to talk about. So. The university has a bunch of um, university teams, athletic teams. There's 20 of them. So if you guys want to play like basketball, soccer, football, um, American football. Have any of you guys played American football? It's wild. Um, it's it's like big guys with like helmets on and then they just crash into each other. It's, it's fun to yeah. It's it's very fun to watch. Um, so you can play these sports if you want, but they're more kind of serious. You practice maybe five times a week um, for a couple of hours, but if you just want to play with your friends, we also have teams called intramurals. Um, and so these are just you with kind of people from your house playing together against other people from the house. So you can do basketball, softball, whatever. There are two that I think are kind of weird that are fun. 
So one is called the broom ball. Um, it is like ice hockey, um, but you wear regular shoes, and then you have like a broomstick, oh. and so you run on the ice and try to play it like that. It's very fun because everyone's very bad at it, right? Everyone falls on the ice, and it's kind of fun to watch. The other one is called inner tube water polo. So it is like water polo, like in a pool, but you have to sit on a big like inflatable um, tube and try to play like that. So again, everybody looks kind of stupid when they play, right? So it's kind of fun to do with your friends. Yeah, do you have a question? So all those sports have like uh, teams for women, right? Yeah, yeah. And so for a lot of intramural teams, it'll be co-ed as well. So you just all kind of play together. And they're not typically very serious. It's just kind of, kind of fun. Yeah, good question. Anybody else about the sports stuff? And then there's also big like athletic gyms on campus that everyone gets to use. And one of the other nice things about being kind of right next to the lake is that you're, you're a few blocks from the lake, so you can go and run along the lake. There's a beach, you can swim, um, all kinds of stuff like that. What about the clubs? Yeah, so there's other like kind of extracurricular clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, oh, uh, we can talk about other clubs later, yeah, yeah if you want. Um, um, so for, for extracurricular clubs, there's we call them registered student organizations, and there's over 400 of them, so there's, there's quite a few. So if you are like a biology major and you want to go into medicine, there is a university hospital on campus, so you can join clubs to kind of work with doctors, to um, work in a lab doing research. Um, if you, so I was a political science and history uh, student when I was at U Chicago, so I worked for this legal aid clinic which helped kind of poor people if they were committed of a crime, something like that. Um, but there are also some kind of fun ones. So there's a hot chocolate tasting club where you sit around every week and you try different hot chocolate, uh, which is kind of fun. There's another one that's called the Zombie Apocalypse Preparedness Task Force. So these kids are kind of weird, right? They think that like the zombie apocalypse is going to come. And so every year, half of the kids will dress up as zombies Half will be the regular kids, and then in the main quad, they like run around and chase each other. It's kind of fun to watch, um, but yeah, so that's one of the things. Uh, and then the other big thing that happens every year is called SCAV, which is short for scavenger hunt. So it's one of the world's biggest scavenger hunts. So typically your house or like your group of friends will have its own team, and then there's a big list of things that you can do to earn points, right? So like my freshman year, I made this big statue of Albert Einstein. Um, a few years ago, kids got in trouble because on the list there was a task to create like a nuclear reactor, um, which is kind of a bad idea. Uh, but a few students worked in the basement of their dorm for a week, and then they got this sort of like nuclear reactor functioning, uh, which was not a good idea, right? The FBI came to campus, the university was not happy, right? So I, I think that is not common, but it's kind of what what U Chicago is all about, right? It's, it's really smart people trying to do really kind of creative things. Um, so that's that. Yeah. It's a free spirit. Yeah, very. Yeah, and I think you have a lot of freedom as a student um, too. Yeah. Uh, with the crime rates in Chicago, how is on campus safe? Oh yeah, great question. So, I think uh, especially like in the news, Chicago has a really bad kind of reputation, right? So I've lived there for five years. I've never had any problems. I think, especially in this neighborhood where U Chicago is, Hyde Park, it's very safe, right? It's always rated as one of the safest neighborhoods in Chicago. And the university does a really good job of ensuring that students are, are kind of well taken care of. So if you are tired and you don't want to walk, or it's raining or snowing, there are buses and shuttles that run 24 hours a day, every day around campus. They stop in front of the library, all the dorms, and they're free to students, so you can just hop on and take one. Um, do you guys know, is there Uber and Lyft here? No. No? There's okay. Uber. There's Uber? Okay. So, but in, in Chicago, every student will get like 10 free Ubers or Lyfts a month. So if you go out to like a club club <laughs> or you go to the gym and it's cold or raining, you can take an Uber back for free, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah. So I think for the most part, it's very, very safe. Yeah. Any other questions about... What happened to children, the doping reactor? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think they got expelled. I think they stayed in school. 
Um, and they probably went to work at like NASA or something, right? <laughs> They're smart, yeah, yeah. How are the prices? Oh yeah, good, so, the, okay, this is a good question. So for most American universities, it's very expensive, right? It's very expensive. So for the University of Chicago, for total one year with tuition, housing, <laughs> books, everything, it is like, does anyone want to guess what it is? 50. 50. Uh, 70 more. 100 grand. Uh, a little bit lower. 90 grand. 90. I think it's around 90 grand, right? 90. I know. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay with me. So here's the thing. So for most schools, and especially the University of Chicago, we give what is called financial aid, right? So this means that you don't pay all of the 90, right? Sometimes you pay nothing. So for two thirds of, of students at U Chicago, they're on financial aid. So the university is giving them money so that they'll come to the school. So well, I know because no one wants to pay 90 grand a year. So if your family makes, well, so for US, Canadian and Mexican citizens and permanent residents, we are need blind, which means that we don't know your financial status when you apply. But for everyone else, we are need aware, which means that we see if you are applying for financial aid or not. It doesn't really impact things, but it just tells us. But yeah, do you have questions? Yeah. Without nationality, I think sometimes. So, for example, I'm selected. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's it's not like we're we're not looking for specific nationalities. Like if someone is from like. I don't know, like Turkey, like we're gonna take them, right? Like it's not, I think for you guys, because you all have this really <laughs> unique, okay, all right, well I was just guessing. Um, there's not like, I think it'll help you having studied abroad and like you guys all speak multiple languages probably. I think we're looking for interesting students, right? And you guys kind of fit that bill. Um, so I think it can help. Um, but so for financial aid, we always kind of, we have this thing where we guarantee to meet 100% of, of demonstrated need. So this means that on our website, you can go to this thing called the net price calculator, and it will show you, you know, how much money like your parents make. You put that in, and then it'll show you the cost of tuition for you Chicago, and then it will kind of spit out your expected contribution. So typically, the university will give you a lot of money to come. So for example, if your family makes under sixty thousand dollars a year. Um, the university will pay for the entire tuition, right? We'll pay for tuition, books, housing, flights, everything like that. And if your family makes under 125000 a year, then we will pay for all of the tuition, which is like 65000 a year. And so I always recommend students, you know, if need is something, financial need is something that you know you will need, always apply for it in the beginning because it'll make it easier for us to, to give you the money to come. Yeah. 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 Um, also, if you're, um, I don't know, I know we have some Bulgarian like, students in here. So if you're from Bulgaria, there's lots of programs that like specifically help Bulgarian students who want to go to school in the United States. Um, one is like the program I work for is called Fulbright. Um, they send a lot of um, Bulgarian students over to America to study. And then also the other one is called um, the America for Bulgaria Foundation. You do? Okay, yeah. Both of those um, help a lot of like students like, with the financial aspect of going to school in the United States. And then also if you are applying to American universities, there's probably an Education USA office in Sofia, and those people, their full-time job is to help students like you apply to the universities in the U.S. because it can be kind of confusing. Yeah. So scholarships are also still Yeah, so, so okay, that's a good question. Because the financial aid is just based on your family's finances. But U Chicago also has what we call merit scholarships, which range from, excuse me, five to 40,000 a year. And those are guaranteed for all four years. You don't have to keep a certain like GPA or anything like that. Um, and they are just given to students who make a really compelling case as to why they want to come to U Chicago. So you don't have to write extra essays. There's no extra application. Everyone who applies to Chicago is automatically considered for these. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, students who apply for financial aid, do they get into some sort of debt after this? So some students will, will maybe take out minor loans, but because the university <laughs> commits to meeting 100% of demonstrated need, I think the, the, the debt that students go into is typically very small. Yeah. Even though like the tuition number is big because we give a lot of money out. Yeah. Somebody else have a question? 
No? Okay. Can you tell us the number of them? So it depends. It depends on the student and their finances. So for some students, you know, it will be everything, right? You cover all of the tuition, your housing, your room and board, the books. And then for some students, it might be $5,000, $10,000. It really kind of ranges. It depends on the student. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Are there certain standards you have to meet to get accepted? So that's a good question. We don't have, like, requirements that you have to meet. So like I talked about, we're going to look at your transcript, your grades. You don't have to have perfect grades. Typically, most students do very well in high school. And then if you are submitting like the SAT or the ACT, it's the same thing. We don't have grades or, or like requirements that you have to meet. Um, sometimes students who have a perfect score will get in. Sometimes they won't get in. But maybe a student who doesn't have a perfect score will get in, right? I think the important thing you know, for you guys to think about are these essays, right? Those are those three essays that you have to write because the University of Chicago last year got, I think, 38,000 applications and our incoming class was 1,800 students. So there's a lot of people who apply and there's only a, a small number of spots. So I think the way for you to kind of distinguish yourself and stand out is through those essays. Make a case for why you are a unique student, and this is true for every university, Make a case for why you're unique. You guys probably all have really interesting stories of you know, living abroad, moving, things like that. And then if you're writing like a why university essay, make it really specific as well. Also, I always recommend you know, have your parents read the essay. If you have an English teacher or you know, a literature teacher, read the essay. Just have some other people look at it. I think that's always helpful. All right, other questions? What's that? Yeah, oh, good question. So. I think U Chicago has a really great, we call it the career <laughs> advancement office, and they work about internships. So for every area. Every area. So what's nice is when you start at U Chicago, you're given an advisor for careers for internships. And they will help you write like your resume, a cover letter, and kind of give you advice on different things that you might want to do. And then if you decide I want to go into medicine or I want to go into engineering you will get a specific advisor in that field. So, for example, I was in the, it's called the careers in law group. So I wanted to go to law school to become a lawyer. I was given an advisor who was a former lawyer who now worked at the university just advising students, right? Helping them kind of get into law schools and learn about what it's like to be a lawyer. So you have that advice, but then the university also provides its own internships for students. So. They're called Metcalf Internships. There's nothing special about the name. But what's nice about them is that they are only for University of Chicago students. So it's not like you're going to be applying to a job with a thousand other people applying, right? It'll only be other U Chicago students. And all of these internships are fully funded as well. So if you work for a summer, I think you get between five and six thousand dollars, and the university will just give you the money, right? You don't have to go through extra hoops trying to get the money. So for example, I worked in Chicago for a legal aid clinic, and then the next summer I worked in Washington DC for the federal government, for the US government, but I had friends that worked for like the BBC in the UK or for a big bank in Shanghai. Um, I don't know if anyone worked in Bulgaria, but you could come back to Bulgaria and work for a summer um, and then go back to <coughs> Chicago. Yeah. You. One more thing about internships, because um, I've worked at like a career office in my university like to help students find internships and find careers after they graduated. Um, and I'm sure it's the same at U Chicago, but there's always like events going on where like yeah. the that office that's usually called the Career Center will bring in um, like different businesses and companies and things like that to like not only talk to students about like what kind of things you should do to like get an internship or get a job there. Um, but there's also a great chance to like actually like network and meet the people who like work at these companies and they're gonna be the ones who are, like, reading through your application. And so you know if they know you and they like so I mean basically what I'm saying is like if you do end up going to one of these American universities, try to go to as many of these like events as possible because it's just gonna like increase your chances of so getting a typically we call them like college or career fairs. Yeah. So it's a big like auditorium filled with all these people and they want to hire college students, right? So there might be things from like 
Disney or Google, or Google, Facebook, Facebook yeah. and they want they want to talk to you. They want to hire you, right? So let's say that I am studying at this university yeah. and I get a part-time job, correct? If that's possible. Yeah. How does this really function? I go to this job for part of the day, and then in the afternoon or evening there is the lesson, right? Yeah. So okay. so that's a good question. So at U Chicago, we have what's called quarter systems. So instead of like two semesters, you're taking three academic quarters. So there's fall quarter, winter quarter, and then spring quarter. And typically in these quarters, you'll be taking three or four classes a quarter. So this means you have maybe one or two classes a day, or if you have three classes a day, you only have class two times or three times a, like a week. Right. So for example, like I, there were a couple of quarters where I only had classes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and I had nothing to do on Tuesday and Thursday. So then maybe you have a part-time job oh, on Tuesday, right. Thursday, you work those. Or you work every day from 8 <laughs> a.m. to 10 p.m., and then you have classes in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. But, but typically, I think students will take this summer quarter from like June till September, and then they work a job full-time. Right. Um, but if you want to work part-time, you could do that too, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so I had a job at my university, and that's what I did. I would work. Usually, like in the mornings, from like what Will said, like eight to like noon, maybe, and then I would have four hours of classes, and then oh, right. you're done for the day. Yeah. And usually, like too, if you, especially if you work at an on-campus job, which is something like I had. I mean, the people who work there, they know that you are students. They know you have classes to go to, so they'll be very like, um, like lenient, lenient nice. or helpful, in, like trying to make a schedule that works for okay. you. Okay. And, yeah. and yeah. often you can do your homework during the job. That's, yeah, I would maybe not. maybe you just sit at a desk and you wait for people to come in and you talk to them, and then you do your homework or you watch Netflix, that's, whatever. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes I would get paid to both do my homework and watch Netflix. Yeah. So pretty nice job, right? Yeah. Um, somebody else have questions? Yeah. What's the acceptance rate? Oh yeah, so the acceptance rate is about 5%, right? So it's very, very low. But I think, as I said, there's a lot of students, you know, who apply, but we only have so many spots. So I think the thing that I would really focus on is making a case for why you want to come to this university. Not just why you want to come to an American university, but this university specifically. So, you know, use what we've talked about today, go online, Learn some more things about the university, what, what kind of interests you and what you would want to do when you're a student, and then write about that. That's the kind of stuff that helps us. Yeah. Any other questions about anything? So one other thing about UChicago that makes it kind of unique are the academic classes. So when you're a student, you might know what you want to study, right? When you come on campus, you might not. Um, so the way kind of your academics will be broken down is your first third will be what we call core classes, which will be required courses in a variety of different subjects. So like history, math, social science, um, foreign language, biological sciences, all these different things. And the nice thing about these classes at UChicago is they're all very small, right? So they're all capped, limited at, at 19 students maximum. So even like this classroom would be too big for these classes. And what's nice about them is they're all discussion-based as well. So you're not just listening to a professor talk for an hour. You get to talk. You get to talk kind of with your friends and with the professor. So it's a much more kind of engaging classroom. So that's the first third. The second third will be your major. So this is why kind of, you know, what you want to study, whether it's physics, creative writing, economics, whatever. The third third is electives. So it's all up to you. So if you want to take a class on, like, horseback riding, or, I don't know, nuclear physics, whatever, you can do that, right? There's kind of no limitations on that. It's totally up to you. Um, somebody have a question? I have a question. Yeah. So, like, when you're seeing, like, applications and stuff, how long do you usually have to wait to know if you're getting accepted? So it depends on when you apply. So if you apply in early November, then you hear back, like, middle of December. Um, so it's only about two months. And then if you apply... In January, um, if you apply in the early decision one, the binding one, you hear back um, late February. And then if you apply regular decision, you apply, you hear back middle of March. So it just, decisions went out like last week for regular decision. So you hear back, kind of, you'll hear back, you'll know by spring. Yeah. And I think most American universities are about the same. It's like April, March is when you kind of hear back. You know. yeah. Other questions about stuff? Um, 
Any other questions about American universities that I can answer? In general? Let's see, I don't want to go too far. Okay. Okay. So one other thing that I, I think might be interesting to talk about at, at U Chicago is maybe more about <coughs> the core classes. Because I think it's it's unique for a university to have a lot of like required courses like this. And the interesting thing about U Chicago is that even though you have to take like a history class or a physics class, you're not going to be stuck with a bunch of like physics majors or people that are really, really interested in it. So for example, I was not a big like math science guy. It was not my best subject, but I still had to take these core classes. So instead of taking really intense hard classes with like math majors, I took a physics class that was called Physics for Future Presidents, right? So it was much more kind of like, like not, not easy, but it was like easier for a non-physics students, and we learned about like, you know, nuclear energy, climate change, stuff like that. So you can find in every required course uh, a choice that is kind of interesting for you, that works for you, right? So you're not going to be stuck taking something you don't want to take. Okay. All right, any other questions about anything before we wrap up? Um, yeah, about Chicago. How close is the closest airport? To so there's two airports in Chicago. Um, the closest one is probably like a 25-minute drive away. And then there's a bus from campus that runs directly to the airport. It's called Midway, and then the big one is called O'Hare. Um, yeah. I don't think you will use the ring for Yeah. So yeah. So there's some, but it's only a few. And typically, you take them your first year or your second year. Um, there, some of them are a whole year. Some of them are just one quarter. So it's like, like I said, it's about a third of your classes are these required ones. Is it four year or three years? Four years. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So it's. Most all universities in America are four years, and you get your bachelor's. What is the process of applying for a master's? Yeah, so it, it depends on the university. So typically, you'll apply your fourth year, um, and if you want to study at U Chicago, I think it's easier to apply, right? But if you want to go to a different university, you can you can do that. So so for example, I got my master's two years later. Um, I went to the London School of Economics. Um, and so it was different because it was abroad, but it's very easy, right? You have to write maybe one more essay, um, and then you send your grades from university, and that's kind of it. It's very easy. Yeah, it's, I think it's much easier than applying to undergraduate schools. Yeah. So first year, you have to leave First two years, first and second year, you have to. Yeah, but I know. So, but it's they're kind of fun, I think, because you get to meet a lot of people, you get to meet your friends, and. For the most part, they're pretty nice. Um, and also, the food on, at U Chicago for the students is also very good. Um, yeah. All right, anything else? Any other questions about American universities? Okay. All right, well, thank you guys for listening. Um,